What's up, everybody? John the Morgan here, uh, checking into you. Not, all, I don't think we're gonna do this live. No, this is gonna be pre-recorded from Honey of Pass, South Carolina. As you can see, I'm walking down the road, and uh, I'll upload this whenever I have some internet, um, because we still don't have internet at the house. Uh, Spectrum did come out and uh, install all the equipment at the new place finally last week on thursday um but there's still no service for the whole neighborhood it's still out and um supposedly you know the spectrum guys are working tirelessly to restore service to everybody but uh i haven't seen them anywhere so they must be doing it underground or like in the uh, dead of night right so Anyway, I'm uh, hoofing it on down to the store, and I figured I would check in with you lovely ladies and gents and just let you all know how, what I've been thinking. And you know, something that I really need to talk about and just get off of my chest before it drives me mad is um, the utter detriment and downfall of the United States-based customer service industry, right? So I guess that would entail uh, sales, customer service, tech support, all that. And we'll just call that the CSR umbrella. But here lately, um, because of the disaster that was Hurricane Helene, uh, I've been forced to deal with uh, customer service of these, you know, large multinational faceless corporations um, more so than, than normal, right? Um, so that would include like, technical support with multiple uh, cell phone companies, uh, customer support and techno technical support with uh, internet service providers and just different, just all kinds of different examples where I've had to deal with uh, customer service for these big multinational corporations. And what I've found more and more, and this is really what I wanted to talk about um, before I just explode from within, is... Uh, First of all, you can't get a native English speaker to save your life on these calls, right? So, like, you may be calling your cell phone service provider or your internet service provider for just a pretty mundane, run-of-the-mill question, um, whether you need tech, tech support or just you have a question about your bill or whatever. Um, you know, what should be, I don't know, a five-minute call or like a two minute call uh, turns into like a 20 or a 25 minute ordeal that uh, that just leaves you end up, you know, ends up leaving you more frustrated and less understanding of what the hell's going on with your account than before you call. Um, and, you know, the reason that this burns me up and it's not I'm not like racist or anything like that. I'm not anti-immigrant. I'm not a xenophobe by any stretch. You know, um, that's not me. Um, but at the same time, I've also worked in the industry that is um, customer service, tech support, and sales, all of the above, uh, for many, many years. Um, it's something that I've done freelance uh, on and off for years. Um, if I'm not doing construction, then that's what I was doing prior to, uh, you know, me doing anything with YouTube. Uh and, you know, the thing is, starting in the early uh, teens, so like the 20 teens, I think you could say, uh, dang, I got something in my eye. Uh, it started to where you, um, we were competing with uh, telemarketing agencies and customer service uh, agencies that were based overseas that were um, bidding on jobs, uh, sometimes a dollar an hour or like two dollars an hour and sometimes even less. Um, and so when I first started doing freelance work, you know, like working from home, offering professional services to business clients all over the world, um, I originally did it for graphic design um, because I like doing graphic design. It's what I enjoy. I've done that for years as well uh, for a print company. Uh, but anyways, I found out very quick that the graphic design market is absolutely flooded with uh, very cheap, very good 
uh, designers, right? And so it took me all of a couple of days to realize that I just couldn't compete with graphic designers, you know, in Southeast Asia or wherever, um, charging a dollar uh, for an entire project that might take you a few hours, right? You just can't compete with that. There's no way. And so uh, I started putting in bids on um, sales and marketing and customer service jobs because I do have a background in that as well. And um, there are some companies that only want to deal with native English speakers um, to work their phones, right? And uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. I know why they want to do that. Um, and so then they're willing to pay a premium for people that are decent, uh, and native English speakers. You know, the problem for me anymore is my name is mud. Um, mainly because if somebody Google searches my name, they're going to realize very quickly that I am a flurfer and that pretty much ruins any chances that you have of making a decent first impression, you know, when the globe's hearted person on the other end of that resume uh, automatically thinks you're fucking insane right out the gate, right? So that certainly doesn't help. Um, but but anyways, the point that I'm going for here is the fact that over the last 10 years, 15 years, um, it's become more and more prevalent for these faceless multinational corporations to outsource their uh, customer service agents and, you know, even sometimes their sales and uh, certainly their tech support to overseas call centers um, that are charging, you know, pennies on the dollar for what an American speaking or an American based company uh, would charge. Uh, you know, American based companies simply can't compete unless it's something, unless it's very important for the company that they have native English speakers representing their company for customer service and the like. And, you know, me personally, I've decided that. I'm just going to start boycotting companies that don't offer um, domestic customer service and tech support. And, and there's multiple reasons for it. Um, I think the main reason is because they are functionally, practically useless most of the time. Like, um, just for an example, you know, if you're on the phone with somebody, even if it is a professional type uh, customer service call or whatever, um, you tell the person on the other end, you say, I'm going to put you on a brief hold. I'll be right back. Okay. And then you put them on hold. It takes like four seconds to say that and then put them on hold. Um, for whatever reason, these non-English speaking CSRs, they're going to take about a minute to tell you that they're going to put you on hold. And you don't understand a word they're saying anyway, but basically they're, they're going to, and they're trying to be polite. I get it. They're not doing anything intentionally, but, um, you get what you pay for. And frankly, you know, not only have they, uh, these corporations directly taken our jobs to, uh, to quote a South Park episode, they took our jobs and they, you know, they did. Um, but then also they're functionally useless. Um, it's a, it's a pain in the ass to deal with somebody when you're trying to express nuances of like a technical issue and they really don't even speak English. Um, it's getting to be ridiculous. Um, it's gotten to the point to where basically every single company that you have to deal with uh, only uses um, foreign uh, customer service, right? To the point where I dread dealing with them. Um, and yeah, so it wants to funnel you over to the, uh, you know, to the web-based solutions. But if you don't have internet, um, it makes it kind of hard. So... I'm going to try to keep this video relatively uh, short, but um, this is just me kind of ranting and uh, touching base with you guys. Um, again, I, I still don't have home internet. Um, the equipment has been installed, and uh, according to Spectrum, as soon as the service is restored to my area, um, then I will have service as well. And as soon as I have service, I am planning to do... Uh, streams and I've got some projects I'm working on I need to finish up and upload so um, I definitely am still around and kicking uh, I feel more and more like Hurricane Helene was an attack as opposed to some sort of a fluke um, just because of the uh, the piss poor handling of the aftermath by these uh, utilities companies namely uh, Spectrum uh, I haven't seen any of them out here working at all 
Um, so yeah, we, you know, we, we pay these companies gobs of money for their services. And then, uh, when it comes down to it, um, they don't, they don't want to do any sort of work to restore the services. So I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing. Okay. There's some roadkill. We will steer clear of that. Whew. And it hit me in the face. Um, so there was something else I was going to mention because uh, we're not even halfway to the, we're not even halfway to the halfway point. Uh, Merca, fuck yeah. Um, yeah, no, let's like honestly though, you guys, I'm gonna just gonna start boycotting companies that don't use domestic customer service, um, just because I think if we vote with our pocketbooks or our wallets or whatever, and just stop feeding these companies that really don't give a damn about us. Um, track phone finally, as of like, apparently within the last couple of weeks or so, um, finally started offering three gigabytes for $10, um, which is certainly not affordable, but it's way more affordable than $10 per gigabyte, right? Which is what that what I've paid historically um, a la carte with track phone. Um, Anyway, I don't know why. Don't know why I brought that up, but it is uh, something that uh, if I do end up sticking with Track Phone, it is certainly not because of their customer service. It's only because um, I'm sort of grandfathered into a sweet deal where uh, I've got service on my phone until the year 2043. Um, so as long as I uh, keep at least one minute on there, I don't have to pay a monthly bill on it as long as I just. Uh, ensure that it maintains a positive balance on the talk minutes then i've got that phone line uh free and clear for another 20 years or so um and so i'd be stupid to uh to get rid of track phone um, but i will keep it around just for emergencies and just you know, just to have it um hurricane helene was um was a crazy storm you know things are getting back to normal but um we still have not got our well working and um my car is at the shop being worked on as we speak. And uh, since I don't have internet, I haven't worked from home in over a month. Uh, I have been doing uh, cleanup jobs to the temp agency as I can, but it is hard without a car. And um, a lot of people don't know, but I broke my back in a motorcycle wreck back in um, October, October 10th of 2014. Um, I was going through a green light on my motorcycle and uh, dude ran a red light and basically clipped my rear tire um i ate shit and broke his windshield with my face uh blacked out flat line for a minute they gave me chest compressions on the uh, asphalt and next thing i know i, I uh, just stood up came to uh got up on my knees stood up and started trying to walk but there was at that point like i don't know 20 people trying to hold me down uh, a bunch of witnesses saw the whole thing and um i ended up uh the, the insurance company uh, ended up settling out of court uh, it took about a year and they settled out of court for twenty five thousand dollars. but uh the lawyer took their cut and they also paid the ambulance ride which was like almost ten thousand dollars for a two mile ambulance ride and so out of the twenty five thousand dollar check i got less than three thousand out of it so um it's kind of a long story but i feel like i got screwed because uh yeah dude physically ran a red light and hit me with his car not he didn't hit my car or my bike you know, like i broke his windshield with my face <laughs> um and definitely lost consciousness lost pulse um i didn't break my back per se but i did a lot of nerve damage and uh, fractured some of the uh ribs back there it was a mess and it uh messed me up for a long time and so i just um i just don't function at 100 percent like i used to before the wreck uh, so i'm not like uh, crippled thank god but um at the same time it, like i can't um i can't do certain things that were easy for me before and now they're like impossible uh, so it's a tough time man a uh, hard time for everybody and um you know hopefully we're going to get through this. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't see exactly how we're going to do it, but I think we will. Uh, God has been very good to us. And, uh, 
long as I don't get hit by a car on my way to the store. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I, I uh, just so just to let y'all know, I am definitely planning a uh, lengthy hangout style stream uh, just as soon as the internet's live. So you possibly can boycott companies that do not offer domestic tech support. Do it. Um, honestly, I'm pretty happy with Mint Mobile, but even they are, I believe, using overseas call centers. Um, but they've actually got pretty decent customer support. Um, Simple Mobile can uh, suck a bag of them. Uh, really, honestly, Track Phone can suck a bag of them. Um, I think Spectrum always offers domestic support. Which is the main reason I'm still even with them after all this, because it's been over a month since that hurricane hit. Um, the power's been on for like two weeks, and so many people all around have internet. It's almost like they deliberately knocked my internet out. I mean, I'm not crazy enough to say that that's even a remote possibility. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it's almost like that. You know what I mean? It's just kind of weird. Um, and, I, you know, I would be researching more into um, the stuff leading up to Hurricane Helene, but I don't have Internet. Um, anyways, let me cut this short, you guys. I just really did want to uh, touch base, check in, let you all know that I'm OK. Uh, give you all that update and uh, wish you guys the best. Let you know there is more content coming up very soon. Uh, one love, you guys. Please keep me. Mina and Lily in your prayers and you will know as soon as I'm back live online because I'll be doing streams and uploads as I can do them all right you guys be good one love and I'll see you in the next one bye